Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We're back with another gameplay video featuring some returning commanders and some more popular ones. So let's hop right into it and see who's playing what and what opening hands they get. Up first is Jason on Kalia the Vast. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this classic commander. Its game plan is to get Kalia out, swing with her, and cheat in some powerful creatures. Jason keeps a risky opening hand of Arid Mesa, Soul Ring, Lightning Greave, Wear Tear, Toxic Deluge, Necropotence, and Keen Duelist. Up next is Sam playing his fan favorite deck, Gyriad Myriad. This deck is full of creatures with Myriad and ways to give creatures Myriad, so then he can use Gyriad's ability to copy those Myriad tokens, meaning they don't go away. He'll keep an opening hand of Forest, Castle Garen Brig, Command Tower, Druid's Deliverance, Beast Within, Devilish Valet, and Champion of Lamholt. Next we have Matt on Corvold the Fey Cursed King. Now this isn't the normal Corvold deck you're probably expecting it to be. It's not just rushing for some combo to win the game instantly, it's more focused on just casting a bunch of big fun spells. Matt will keep an opening hand of Overgrown Tomb, Phyrexian Tower, Mox Diamond, Talisman of Indulgence, Profane Tutor, Toxic Deluge, and Atsushi, the Blazing Sky. And finally, last but not least, we have Logan on Lagrella the Magpie. This is a really fun Bant Flicker deck, focusing on using lots of creatures with ETB abilities and flicker effects such as Lagrella herself to gain a lot of value. Logan will keep an opening hand of Plains, Flooded Strand, the Ozolith, Ephemerate, Farewell, Esper Sentinel, and Cloud Blazer. We're about to hop right into the gameplay, but before we do, leave us a comment down below letting us know who you think is going to win. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out all our links in the description. We've got a second channel where we post our podcast, links to our Patreon, links to our Discord, you name it. We've even got affiliate links, and our first one is Dragon Shield. So if you're looking to pick up any high quality magic products such as playmats, deck boxes, or sleeves, be sure to check out our link. We've also got a link to our Inked Gaming referral page, so if you're looking to make any custom playmats or anything of the sort, be sure to check them out as well. But that is enough talk, let's hop right into the gameplay. Looks like Matt wins the die roll, and he'll start off by free casting his Mox Diamond, pitching his Phyrexian Tower when it enters. He'll then shock in his Overgrown Tomb, and then suspend his Profane Tutor. The turn is then passed to Logan, who will play his Planes, and then his Esper Sentinel, and then he'll pass to Jason. Jason thankfully top decks a Luxury Suite, so he'll play it, and then he'll cast a Soul Ring, and Logan draws a card. He'll then cast Lightning Greaves. The turn is then passed to Sam, who just plays a Forest and passes back to Matt. Suspend ticks down, and then Matt will play his own Luxury Suite. He'll then drop Talisman of Indulgence, and he will pay the 1, and then he'll pass to Logan. Logan plays Flooded Strand, casts Ozolith, and then passes to Jason, who plays and fetches with his Arid Mesa for a Scrublands. After this, he'll cast his Keen Duelist, and then put the Lightning Greaves on it. He'll then move to combat, bonk Matt for 2, and then he'll pass the turn to Sam. Sam will just play an untapped Castle Garenbrig, and then pass to Matt. And on Matt's turn, he'll cast Profane Tutor from Suspend, and he will pay for Esper Sentinel. After searching his library, he'll then move to his first main phase, and he'll cast Dockside Extortionist, which is definitely not what he tutored for. When it enters the battlefield, he'll get 4 treasure tokens. And with 4 treasure tokens and an untapped talisman, he's able to cast Corvold. And when Corvold ETBs, he'll sacrifice Dockside, he'll put a counter on Corvold, and draw a card. The turn is passed to Logan, who will stop on instep to fetch for Aspara's headquarters. He'll then play and fetch with a Windswept Heath for a Savannah. He'll then tap for 3 to cast his Reflector Mage to bounce Corvold back to Matt's hand. After this, he moves to combat, hits Sam for 1, and then passes the turn to Jason. On Jason's upkeep, he chooses Sam as his target for Keen Duelist, and Jason will reveal a Wheel of Fortune, and Sam will reveal Worms Crossing Guard. Then on Jason's main phase, he'll play a Marsh Flats and immediately crack it for a Badlands. He'll then pay 3 black mana to cast Necropotence, paying the 1, and after it resolves, he'll pay 6 life to exile 6 cards with it. After this, he'll move to his end step, and he has to exile 3 cards from his hand, and he just does 3 lands. The turn is then passed to Sam, and he'll play his Command Tower, and then he'll cast his Devilish Valet. After this, he'll move to combat, and since the Valet has haste, he'll point 1 damage at Matt, who takes it. Turn is then passed to Matt, who starts off with a basic mount in his land for turn. He'll then tap for 4 mana to cast at Sushi. And then he'll just pass the turn to Logan, who plays Besaidu as land for turn. He'll then tap for 3 and cast Aura Shards. And then the turn will be passed to Jason. Keen Duelist triggers on upkeep, and Sam is still the target. Rakdos Signet and Sundering Growth are revealed. He'll then play Exotic Orchard as land for turn, and then he'll cast the Rakdos Signet, and he will pay the 1. 
After this, he'll cast Kalia. Jason will then attempt to put Lightning Greaves over to Kalia, but Logan will respond by tapping for one to cast Ephemerate on the Reflector Mage. When the Reflector Mage enters the battlefield again, Logan will have it bounce Kalia, and then Aura Shards will also trigger, and he'll destroy Necropotence. This will all resolve, and Jason has nothing left to do, so he'll just pass the turn to Sam, who starts off with a basic Mountain as lane for turn. He'll then cast his Champion of Lambhold, which will trigger his Devilish Valet, and then he'll move to combat and swing for two at Jason, then pass the turn to Matt. Matt decides he absolutely hates this board state, so he's going to cast Toxic Deluge, paying four life. He doesn't pay one to Esper Sentinel, and then the Deluge will resolve. And Matt chooses the Treasures on the die trigger. After this, Matt will cast a Grist the Hunger Tide, and he'll uptick it to mill a Goldspan Dragon and make a 1-1 one -one bug. The turn is then passed to Logan, and there are no valid targets for Ephemerate. He'll then move to first main phase, and he'll play a Rhymewood Falls as land for turn. He then just passes the turn to Jason, who immediately drops a Dragon Tempest, which is a terrifying card in this deck. He then taps for three to cast a Wear Tear, destroying Aura Shards and Mox Diamond. The turn is then passed to Sam, who starts off with an Iganjo as land for turn. He'll then tap for five to cast Girid, and he'll get a 4-4 Rhino when he enters the battlefield. The turn is then passed to Matt, and he'll immediately cast Corvold again. When he enters the battlefield, he'll sacrifice his 1-1 one -one Bug to get a counter and a card. After this, he plays a Polluted Delta as land for turn, and he'll immediately crack it for a Bayou, also getting another Corvold trigger. Matt will then sacrifice his treasure token for a black Corvold trigger, and then he'll tap his Bayou, and then cast Lightning Greaves. He'll then attempt to suit up Corvold with Shroud, but Logan will respond by Swords to Plow sharing Corvold in response. And so Corvold is exiled, and Matt will gain 7 life. He'll then uptick Gris to make a bug, put the boots on the bug, yes I know they're Greaves, swing one at Logan, and then pass the turn to Logan. And he'll start his turn off by casting Cloud Blazer to gain two life and draw two cards. He'll then play an Irrigated Farmland and pass the turn to Jason. Jason, who has played Yurion before, knows that Cloud Blazer is very, very good, so he'll stop on instep to cast Swords to Plowshares on it. Then on his first main, he'll play a Polluted Delta as land for turn. He'll then cast Kalia, which gets haste when she enters the battlefield, and then he'll put the Greaves on her. Then, with absolutely no hesitation, he'll move to combat and swings Kali at Logan. The card he drops in is Big Avacyn, which he also sends at Logan, so Logan has to take 10 damage. In second main, Jason will crack his Polluted Delta for a Swamp, and then he'll drop Wheel of Fortune, forcing everybody to discard their hands and draw another 7 cards. He then moves Greaves over to Avacyn, and then he'll pass the turn to Sam, who starts off with a Castle Embrith. He then casts the three visits, finding a Savannah to the battlefield, and then will drop Warchief Giant. Sam will then move to combat, and he swings both Girid and the Giant at Jason, and then there's a Myriad trigger and a Girid trigger. And with that populate trigger, Sam will make another one of the Giants, and he'll send this copy at Logan. Moving to damage, Matt will take five, Logan will take ten, and Jason will take seven. Then at the end of combat, the tokens created from Myriad get exiled, so he'll get to keep two of the Giants. After this, the turn is passed to Matt, who will play a Taiga as land for turn. He'll then uptick Grist again to make a bug and mill Reign of Riches. He'll then ensure that the goose is loose, making a food token when the goose enters the battlefield. He'll then move his boots over to his summoning sick bug, and he'll swing for two at Jason, who takes it. He'll then cast the three visits, finding a Zeotora's Proving Ground, and then he'll pass to Logan while searching. Logan will start off with a Glacial Floodplain, and then he'll cast his commander, Lagrella. He'll exile Kalia, Girid, and one of Matt's bugs, and Sam decides to put Girid back into the command zone. Logan will then tap for an additional 3 to cast Ristic Study, and then the turn is passed to Jason, who immediately casts Vindicate, destroying Lugrilla to get his commander back, and he will pay the 1. Dragon Tempest gives haste, so he'll then move to combat, and he'll full swing at Logan. Kalia attack trigger puts in Raziketh also coming at Logan, so he has to take 18 damage. And after combat, Jason passes the turn to Sam, who starts off with a basic planes as land for turn. He'll then activate Castle Garenbrig, getting 6 green mana, and then tap for 2 more to cast a Crater Hoof Behemoth. And he does pay the 1. Jason, who knows that if this Crater Hoof resolves, he is definitely dead this turn, will respond by sacrificing Kalia and losing 2 life to Razakep to search for a card. And he'll cast the said card, which is a Fire Covenant. And he'll pay 10 life, dealing 3 damage to each of the Giants and 4 to the Rhino, essentially wiping Sam's board. Jason will pay the one to Ristic Study, and then the Fire Covenant will resolve, then the Crater Hoof will resolve, and it'll only buff itself. Sam will still move to combat and swing 6 at Matt though, who just takes it. The turn is then passed to Matt, and on his turn he immediately minus 5's Grist. And Matt has a total of 6 creatures in his graveyard, so all of his opponents will lose 6 life. That means Logan and Jason will both die here. After this, Matt will tap for 5 and he'll cast Sadisi Undead Vizier. 
and when it enters the battlefield, he'll exploit his bug. After searching his library, he'll then play a Gemstone Caverns as Lamp Return. He'll then drop a Ruthless Technomancer, sacrificing Sidisi when it enters the battlefield, and he'll make four treasure tokens. He'll then equip the Technomancer with his Lightning Greaves, swing for two at Sam, and then he'll pass the turn. Sam will start his turn off with a Ponder's Enclave, and then he'll drop a Smothering Tithe. For this, he'll hardcast Force of Vigor, destroying Lightning Greaves and Talisman of Indulgence. And Matt will respond by casting Assassin's Trophy on the Smothering Tithe. Sam will find a mount to the battlefield, and then the Force will resolve. After this, he moves to combat, and will swing for 5 at Matt, who has to take it. The turn is then passed to Matt, who will immediately start off by upticking Gris to get his bug and mill a card. After this, he'll tap all of his lands to recast Corvold. Corvold ETB trigger, and Matt will sacrifice Goose. He'll then play Urza Saga as land for turn. Then he'll cast a Lotus Petal, and then pass the turn to Sam. He'll do the same as Matt, and start by casting his commander again, but this ETB trigger gets him a 4-4 Rhino. He'll then pass the turn back to Matt. Matt will start off by sacrificing his Lotus Petal for a red, Corvold trigger, and then his two treasures for two more red, two more Corvold triggers, but he accidentally only puts one extra counter on Corvold. He'll then cast Jeska's Will, choosing both modes. He makes three red mana, and then exiles Bloodstained Mire, Old Gnawbone, and Yavi Maya. He'll then play the Bloodstained Mire's land for turn, and then fetch with it for a bad lands, accidentally missing a Corvold trigger. He'll then minus two Grist, killing it, sacrificing his bug as well, to destroy Gearhead, and he will have a Corvold trigger. After this, he'll cast Old Gnawbone, and then a Ragavan. He'll then move to combat, and will swing in the air at Sam, attack trigger, he'll sacrifice Ragavan, and then another Corvold trigger. Matt connects for 9 commander, and so he'll make 9 treasures. Matt will then pass the turn to Sam, who will start off by playing Taiga as land for turn. He'll then tap for 6, and drop Phyrexian Rebirth. It'll resolve, 5 creatures died, so Sam will make a 5-5. Then on 2nd main, he'll activate Bonter's Enclave to draw a card. And then the turn is passed to Matt. Matt's Urza Saga will reach its final stage, so he'll get a Soul Ring. And then he'll tap for 9 mana to recast Gorvold again. ETB trigger, he'll sacrifice the Soul Ring and then he'll play a Lotus Field. He'll sacrifice his Mountain and his Gemstone Caverns when it enters the battlefield, and he'll get two more Corvold Triggers. Matt will then sacrifice eight Treasures to float eight mana, he'll get eight Corvold Triggers, and then he'll only pay two green to cast a Great Henge. He'll then sacrifice his last Treasure to get his last Corvold Trigger, and then he'll drop a Fires of Yavi Maya. With no responses from Sam, Matt will then move to combat and attempt to swing 16 more Commander at him, but Sam will just concede. So, there you have it. The Big Dumb Chun Dragon is this week's winner. Well everyone, there you have it. Was that how you expected the game to go? For me, it kinda was. Corvold is just so strong. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let us know what you thought in the comments down below, and don't forget to check out the deck lists. See how everybody built their decks, and while you're checking out the links, don't forget to check out all of our other ones as well. Also, if you're interested in hearing our opinions on Magic and the games we play, check out our podcasts. We may talk about your favorite cards, or potentially you could hear some more detail about what went down during certain games. It's called Wrinkly Brain EDH, or you can just click the link down in our link tree. But that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching again. Have a smooth day.